Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. It is Food for Thought Friday, and thank you so much for joining with joining us today. Uh, just so excited to see what God wants to do in your life today, and want to share some things that spoke to me earlier this week that might help you today as uh, we wrap up uh, uh, another work week. It says, uh, I saw this great quote, I'm not sure who said it, it says author unknown, but it really spoke to me and I shared it with several others earlier this week and they were like, oh, I needed to be reminded of that. It says, our king is seated. He's not frantically pacing. He's not anxious or nervous. He's not unsettled or scared. He is seated, steady, and secure. Oh, that's so good. You know, friends, I want you to know that Jesus, he's he, your king, he is our king. King Jesus. He's not frantically pacing. He's not anxious or nervous today about whatever you're going through. He's not unsettled or he's not scared. And he is seated, steady and secure on the throne of God, right next to God. And he is advocating on your behalf. That's powerful to know, friends. I'll never forget uh, many years ago. My dad's been in heaven now. Hard to believe it'll be eight years in March. But I can remember one time I was really worked up about a situation. And my dad, uh, such a great listener, listened to me. And then he just kind of looked at me. He said, son, you know, uh, I understand what you're saying. I appreciate you sharing. But i got to be honest with you. Uh, I, I, I think God's got this. I said, well, yeah, dad, I know, I know. He said, no, seriously, son. He said, I don't think God's up in heaven just wringing his hand, rubbing his hands through his hair like going, oh, my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do in this situation in Greg's life. <laughs> and I kind of had to chuckle and smile. And uh, uh, my dad said it very lovingly. But, man, he got his point across that, you know what, Greg, I know this situation seems overwhelming to you right now. But you know what? God's got it. He's got it. And he's working behind the scenes in ways that you may not know and you may not understand. But he's a big, big God. So, friends, uh, be encouraged today. God is on the throne. He loves you, and he's going to make it make it happen. I can remember one time when I was really struggling with a, a situation that was bothering me, and uh, I had a good friend named Charles, and he was from Malaysia. And he listened so kindly, and uh, his English was a little broken, uh, but very fluent, super intelligent guy. But I remember he, after he listened so patiently, and he just said, Brother, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but I, I know this. I don't know what to tell you the answer is, but I do know to tell you this. He said, God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. And you know what, man? I mean, that's happened, gosh, twenty uh, over 20 years ago now. Wow, that's amazing, about 25 years ago. And I've never forgotten that. And friends, I want you to know that God is still on the throne, okay? He is. He's got you. He's with you. He's for you. I want to remind you, the Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And you may feel like you have a lot of people against you. But you and God are an audience of one. You're a majority. Remember, if you're a follower of Jesus, you've got God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit with you. A team of three, three in one. The Trinity is on your side. I mean, think about it. You're playing one-on-one -on -one in life, in basketball. Really, you're playing four-on-one. -on you've got three teammates. But the thing is, we don't ask them a lot of time a lot of times we don't ask the Holy Spirit, who is a comforter and a counselor. I love it uh, when it describes that in uh, the Amplified Bible. It goes on to say about it, he's an advocate. Um, it just describes all the words. He's an intercessor. And so just know that, friends, God is with you today, and he is on the throne. I love this quote by John Gordon. He's kind of like a more modern uh the newer kind of modern-day version of John Maxwell, even though John Maxwell still has a lot of influence, but John's in his 70s, John Maxwell, and kind of on the down uh, side of his career, which is still making ripples. Uh, watched one of his videos the other day that really spoke to me about growing as a uh, human and just growing in areas of your life. But uh, John Gordon's uh, kind of, I think, the next John Maxwell is – just got a lot of wisdom, and he's also a follower of Jesus. He said recently, failure is your partner in growth. It doesn't define you. It refines you. Mm, that's so good. 
Say it one more time. John Gordon. He said, failure is your partner in growth. It doesn't define you. It refines you. And friends, uh, as I read that, I thought that is so true. But a lot of times I don't let it refine me. I let it define me. And I let the enemy keep me in the past. And I want to remind you what Philippians 3 verse 13 says. Kind of easy one to remember there. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. It says, I, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and focusing on what lies ahead. In other words, throw away the rearview mirror. As the old saying goes, and John Maxwell wrote a book called this, entitled this, it said, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. <laughs> so I want to ask you today, if you didn't win, did you learn though? Even though you may have lost, you may have had a failure, a setback, a disappointment. And as the old saying goes, you know, you're still here. You survived. You may have a scar, but that means you survived. And I heard Lecrae say this many years ago. I've never thought about it. I've never forgot it. I think about it quite often. Your scars can become someone else's stars. Mm. Can I get an amen on that? Your scars can become somebody else's stars. In other words, friends, your wound could be your greatest ministry. Your greatest wound will be your ministry if you allow God to heal you from that wound first and foremost. Sometimes even while we're healing from the wound, we can still help others because we're further ahead than where they are at this moment. And so I just want to encourage you today to look at whatever hurt is and how can it help others. Sherry Matherly, a wonderful example. Uh, you know, she was in a domestic situation, domestic violence, marriage. And over the years, even though she had wounds, almost lost her life, actually, you know what? She now helps other ladies. She said, you know, I'm not going to let the enemy win over the domestic violence that I suffered. And I wish I would have left a long time before I did. But you know what? I'm going to let God use it for his glory. And he'll do that with your wound, too, friends. I saw this quote uh, I like this. Uh, it was posted by Gail Roberts. It says, Salvation, grace, and forgiveness is not a reward for the righteous. It is a gift for the guilty. I want to say that again. Salvation, grace, and forgiveness is not a reward for the righteous. It is a gift for the guilty. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says, for by grace we are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. That way no man or woman should boast about it. It's grace, friends. You can't work your way into heaven. I always get concerned. I ask people, you know, or you know, especially when they're getting near the end of their life, and they've asked me to do their funeral. I just say, are you ready to meet Jesus? You know, are you ready to go to heaven? And I say, well, I think so, or... I hope so. And I'm like, well, you know, it's it's not complicated. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And most of the time they say, yes, they have. But they say, you know, but I've done some bad things since then. I said, okay. Have you asked God for forgiveness? They're like, yeah. I said, okay. I said, well, would you like to maybe just rededicate yourself to God right now? Just uh, letting him know that, you know, he is not just your Savior, but he's your Lord too. And they're like, Sure. And so I'll have them repeat that great confession. Maybe today you want to do that right now with me. Maybe you want to rededicate your life. I didn't have this plan today in my notes for this program, but I believe somebody listening or watching on our YouTube channel that uh, you needed to hear this today. So I want you to repeat after me, or maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe today's the day of salvation for you. You cross the line of faith and say, you know what? I'm all in. I've been kind of a pretender. I've been kind of looking on the outside in, but I have one foot in the world and one foot in church or one foot trying to follow in a life, a life of faith. But right now, I want you, wherever you're at, whether this is the first time for you ever accepting Jesus or whether you're like, you know what, I need to rededicate my life to Jesus today. Repeat after me, please. I believe with all my heart, that Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of God. He's my Lord. 
and he's my Savior. Uh, friends, I believe somebody listening today that uh, you may have tears in your eyes. And many times I've seen even the biggest of men, uh, just as they get to that last part, their lip starts trembling, and he's my Savior. And just tears rolling down their cheeks because uh, we get near them, we realize we can't save ourselves, friends. But I'm so thankful that God made it really easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus. In fact, it was really, really painful. But Jesus made it simple for you and I. So, man, if you rededicated your life today or you accepted Jesus for the first time, man, would you let us know? Would you go to our website, hopeisheretoday.org? That's hopeisheretoday.org. And uh, just email us and let us know that. We also have a Facebook page, Hope Is Here. Or you can message us there on Facebook. Um, I hope if you're on social media that you'll like our Facebook page, Hope Is Here. Also, uh, we are on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. But for those three, it's a little different. Uh, it's Hope Is Here Lex, L-E-X, short for Lexington. Hope Is Here Lex. So, L-E-X. So I hope that you, if you are on Instagram, you're on Twitter, you're on TikTok, that you will subscribe and uh, follow us and like us. And if you're blessed by our program, make a comment and share it uh, with others. Uh, it's just such a blessing, and it's a source of encouragement to me and my wonderful team at Hope Is Here that we're so blessed to have. Uh, so many wonderful people that help with this, and Kathy and Tammy and Megan. We've just uh, we've got a great team, and so thankful for all these people that help me behind the scenes that make this possible. And it really encourages all of us when we uh, know that somebody's been blessed by a program. So uh, please take time to do that today. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel, and most of our programs are not all the time. Sometimes I'm a little technically challenged, <laughs> as I know uh, Tammy, who produces the YouTube uh, videos for me, uh, is laughing as she hears this. But, you know, the, I hope you'll go to YouTube, type in Hope is Here, and then my name, Greg Horn, H-O-R-N. Hope you'll subscribe to that. It uh, just helps people find us quicker. Once again, if you've been blessed by our program, please share that with us, and we would really, really appreciate it. I saw this quote today, uh, or, or I'm sorry, uh, this week. Uh, it says, identifying the pattern is awareness. Choosing not to repeat the cycle is growth. Ouch. That We talked about uh, truth and grace earlier this week on Tuesday's program about John. He said Jesus came full of truth and grace. Well, this one's got a little bit of both in it here, doesn't it? Identifying the pattern is awareness. Choosing not to repeat the cycle is growth. So, friends, uh, you know, sometimes we just have to have some accountability. Uh, I've had people that said, hey, I want you to have access to everything I look at online. And uh, there's certain software, a lot of them are free. That uh, And so I would get report if they looked at anything that could be possible, uh, you know, something that could cause lust and uh, some type of pornography. And, and uh, just people want accountability. Or I had a guy that, you know, just struggled with do-it-yourself projects and kept buying them at Home Depot, uh, even though he hadn't finished the other three he had already bought. And uh, he just gave me his Home Depot credit card. And I said, man, until I get these other three projects done, I don't want to be tempted, so I'm giving you my credit card. And, you know, friends, uh, that's when you're serious about changing, okay, and that you want to grow. Well, fortunately, we're out of time, but if you've been blessed by this program, I hope you'll share it with somebody else. Have a great weekend. Know that you're blessed and loved and that there's always hope because of Jesus. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.